Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay, and what I got for you today is the butter maker. All right, guys, just check out this butter. 75 millimeter F1.2 butter. Pretty incredible, right? So if you're like, Jay, what is butter? What are you talking about, butter? You see this back here? This like blurry out of focus area? When, when the blurry out of focus area gets to like an absurd level, like an insane level, that's when it turns to butter. Like think about the background just like melting into butter. That's where that term comes from. I love using it. And uh, this lens is the butter maker. All right, guys, so getting a closer look at the butter maker. It's actually called the Viltrox 75 millimeter F 1.2 lens. Now, this is an autofocus lens and comes with a nice pedal style plastic lens hood here. So this is like the ultimate portrait lens for the crop factor Sony cameras, in my opinion. It is unbelievable. It's got an effective focal length of about 115 millimeter. So looking at it here, you can see the build quality is really nice. It's an all metal design. It's got a 77 millimeter filter thread on the front here. It has some really nice weather sealing. And again, just the build quality and the way this lens looks is really good. So the manual focus ring feels like absolute butter. Now this also has the manual aperture ring, which turns nice and smooth, and it has a very firm lock to auto here. So you're not gonna accidentally switch it off auto that easily. And it also has a click and de-click switch for the aperture. So if you put that on, you'll get that clicking there. It's like kind of like a nice soft click. It's not too aggressive of a click. Now on the side here, you also have an autofocus manual focus switch, which is convenient, and the custom function button here that you can program in the camera. Now looking at the back of the lens, it's all metal brass bayonet here, and it has a nice beefy rubber gasket. You can see this orange gasket here, and it sticks out quite a bit. It's a really nice gasket, and um, you know, just a really sweet looking lens overall, I would say. The build quality is excellent on this, it really is. Um, I did almost all the testing on the A6400, with this lens, um, but I did also use it on the a7 IV, as you saw in the beginning of this video. So this lens actually comes in at about 675 grams, so it's definitely got some beef to it, you know what I mean? It's like beefy, it's pretty heavy, it makes sense, 77 millimeter filter thread, and it's f1.2, which is crazy fast aperture, and that's why this thing is the butter maker. You saw the butter. All right, so a few other things. The minimum focus distance on this lens is not that great. It's like 0.88 meters or 88 centimeters approximately, so it's like almost three feet. Not quite three feet, but almost. So you're not getting much magnification from this, but as far as a portrait lens goes, that's fine because you're never really gonna be closer than three feet unless you're trying to get like a macro shot of eyes or something like that. That's really not that much of an issue, but it, you definitely need to know that because if you wanna get really close to something and focus, it's not gonna do that. You gotta move back a little bit. Now the focus motor on here is pretty good. It does make a little bit of noise. When you're in like photo mode and it switches from the foreground to the background really quick, you can hear the focus motor. It's like it makes like that kind of noise. Same thing with video. If you have the autofocus speed set to fast, and or responsive, it will make a noise when switching autofocus when recording video. However, if you have it slower um, and you have a focus transition, you can't hear it at all, as you could see in this focus transition test here in my like front yard area. Now, when it comes to focus breathing, I wanna show you here on this brick wall, it's pretty easy to see when it switches from me to the brick wall. In addition to that, the brick wall will show you the distortion that this lens has, which is virtually none. All right, guys, let's go into Lightroom real quick and I'll show you what this lens can do in the lab testing really quick. And then we will go into the real world photos and I'll show you what the butter maker can do for you in the real world. All right, so in the lab here, this is at F1.2. And you could see here, there is a little bit of vignetting, which is like the darkening of the corners, but you could see the sharpness is just incredible at f1.2, even in the corners. And notice the fringing, there's like none, no purple or green here 
on the highlighted coins, which is where you would normally see it. You'd normally see it like here. Um, just there's a very, very, very slight amount on the edge here, uh, a little bit of fringing, but it's like nothing worth noting. And I was shocked at how good this lens performed optically. I really was. It's remarkable how good this lens is for the money. Now, if I just go through the apertures, you will see the vignette kind of go away. So the, the corners will get a little bit brighter and the bouquet balls will change. And you can see how those bouquet balls render as I stop down. Also note on the top left of the screen, you can see the aperture. Now at the minimum focus distance, this is what it looks like focused on the corner. Now, f1.2, just look at that sharpness. That's incredible. It really is. Normally, lenses that are faster than 1.4 or faster than 1.8 even don't look this sharp. They tend to like get a little softer and there tends to be fringing and stuff like that, which is like that purple and green you might see on like especially shiny subjects like this quarter, which is why I use this in my lab scene. But you could see here it doesn't have that and it looks great. So let me just go through these really quick so you can see that bokeh rendering, how it changes all the way to f16. Now if I just go back to like this one here at f2.8 and zoom in, you can see here like this one here what says f4, you can see it did tack up, the sharpness did tack up quite a bit. So it does get sharper as the aperture stops down, which you can expect, but um, just wide open, I'm still amazed at how sharp this lens is, as you can see here. I just wanted to show you really quick, I did also do some testing on the a7 IV to show you what the vignette looks like. So on a full frame camera, this is what you can expect. So you can see the vignetting is pretty darn heavy. Now you can crop in and get it to look like this. Now, if I hit the info button, you could see that the resolution is 5,000 by 3,300 on this one. And on this one, this is 7,000. So full frame is 7,000. You have to basically crop it down to about 5,000 to get rid of the vignetting. Now, if you look here, this one is taken in crop factor mode. So crop factor mode on the a7 IV is resulting in 4,600. And if you look here, this is the same shot taken in full frame mode, except I cropped it. So I was able to get it at 5,295 approximately with this particular frame. So it does look like if you use this on a full frame camera, you can get a wider view um, than you can on the crop factor cameras. So depending on what you're using, it is a full frame option. You will have to crop in a little bit, but you do get a little more resolution than using crop factor mode on the a7 IV as an example. So you might be better off shooting in full frame mode and cropping in post if you want that extra resolution. If you wanna use this on a full frame camera, and you know, get the butter maker for yourself. All right, so first shot I took was of Jace here on the couch. So there's a pillow in the foreground you could see turned to butter. And then the background here, you could see the lights turned a little cat eye-ish because they're towards the corners, um, but that's normal. Now here, I just took a shot of my dirt bike handlebar here as I was on my way outside. And you could see this is my front door that just buttered out. Now I focused on the tree and there happened to be a slug slithering along. And just look, that background butter here is ridiculous. And in the foreground, again, very nice rendering. Here's a depth of field fall off shot of the fence. So you can actually watch the butter being melted. And now here's just a portrait sample of my son, Jace. So this is a full body shot with him posing with his bicycle. And again, just look at that background separation. I mean, you could tell that there are cars back there, but they're nice and blurry, nice 3D pop offering from this. And I can zoom in here, you'll see just how sharp it is. It's incredibly sharp. And this is at f1.2, of course. I pretty much had it wide open the whole time I was using this lens. I did stop it down for the lab testing. So then I just walked closer to Jace and I got this more like three quarter shot. Now you can see the, the cars and stuff in the background buttering out quite a bit more. Now getting really close to Jace, just the headshot portrait, you can see the background just completely butters out. Now here, Jace was coming towards me on his bike and I had the camera in rapid fire mode. Now he's using the A6400 for this and I had it in continuous autofocus high speed continuous. I didn't have it at the maximum high speed continuous, just the regular high speed continuous. And I just took a bunch of shots of Jace driving towards me. And this, these are raw photos, so they look a little bit flat. I didn't edit them or anything, but check this out. Shot after shot, you can see sharp, sharp, 
sharp. It takes a second for Lightroom to load. So it, initially it looks a little soft, but then it tacks right up once it loads. So you can see it's getting closer, sharp, 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 and another sharp shot. After that, it did get, a, it did start to soften out because he was getting too close to me. But I got like 10 shots in a row sharp while he's cruising towards me at about five, 10 miles an hour. I was really impressed. I did not expect this affordable lens to be able to keep up doing that. So that's nice to know. So you can get a little bit of like action portrait stuff with this lens as well. Just look at this background butter. This is just a flower in my neighbor's yard. And normally this shot is kind of boring because the background is distracting and stuff. But with a lens like this, I mean, it's just butter city for sure. It's just oozing butter and really like that. Now, just looking at my car, I focused on the mirror here and you can see how the car just butters out. Background, same thing. Here's one of a cat, neighborhood stray. Ollie is the cat's name. And you can see zoomed in here, very, very sharp at f1.2. And here's one of Jace just petting the cat. Here's another one. I got a little closer to the cat this time. And now if I zoom in, just look at this, guys. I did stop it down to f1.8 for this shot. I didn't mean to do that. I thought I had it at f1.2, but this is at f1.8 just to let you know. Killer background separation. Now this is at f1.2. And again, just incredible sharpness and background butter. Just remarkable looking. Now here's that egg sandwich that you saw in the beginning. Absolutely killer. And with the lights in the background, you can see just what it looks like. Now again, you do get some curvature with the aperture and the rendering here, but I really like the way that that looks. In my opinion, that curvature, um, you, I've noticed it over the years with like really high quality lenses like Zeiss lenses and things like that. And I think it gives the image more 3D pop when it has that little bit of curvature. But if you're somebody that wants those bouquet balls to look like perfect, this lens isn't going to give you that result. Now here's just one of Jace's bike, a close up. And again, just remarkable sharpness. F1.2, look at that color clarity. You can see the seat just completely waters out. I have no idea what's going on back there. Here's one of the tire with the brick walkway in the background. Here's just another one. Here's one of Jace's shoe. Uh, his shoe is the croc, and you can see just the texture on the shoe. Very, very sharp. Here's another one. Here's that hummingbird thing that I have in my uh, garden. Now here's a couple of Jace. I was actually shooting through leaves to get this look. So this is like this blurry green in the foreground is actually leaves. So it's just a snapshot portrait, but I really like this style of photography. And if you get yourself in like weeds and shoot through them, you can get amazing results similar to what I'm trying to illustrate here. Now this is what it actually looked like when I focused on the leaves. So this is what I was shooting through. So this is just what the leaves looked like. Now when I focused on Jace, this is the rendering. So that's pretty cool. And this is a great lens for that option. Now this one is just a really like grungy look. I was going for a cinematic look with this particular edit. And here's just a brighter version of that. Now here's just a couple more portrait snapshots of Jace. Now, of course, if I'm using off camera lighting in like a real professional environment, this would look a lot better um, because the subject would be lit properly with like lighting and it would be balanced with the ambient light. Now, sometimes you can get this to look better in daylight, but I was like in the woods and stuff. So I was really trying to illustrate more just the depth of field play that you can get. But anyways, this looks great for just right off the camera in natural light. This looks excellent in my opinion. Here's another one. Background butter is incredible. Here's a full body shot. And again, you can see just how blurry that background gets and that 3D pop looks really good. Here's one more. I just included a little bit of foreground on the bottom, but it kind of cut off his feet a little bit. That layering, if you add that foreground information, it just creates that depth to the shot. Here's just one of a weed looking down and you can see the ground just blurs out completely and it looks like this 3D, you know, flower just floating there. Here's one of Layla. Here's another one. Just look at that background separation. Again, remarkable. Here's the brick wall shot just so you can see the distortion. It's pretty much non-existent. Here's one. I just stopped at the uh, my local and uh, grabbed a beer the other day really quick and I thought this looked good. It was being like illuminated by the window light. And again, just the background separation of the bar and stuff is killer. Now here's some more Zach Mac sculptures. Uh, I like to take pictures of these things because they're so cool looking. And here's just one I was testing off the flaring. So the sun was like right here in the background 
and you can see here this flare like on his face like where his lips would be that's the little bit of flaring I got and again here is another one you can see a little bit of flaring there now here's just a couple more shots this was actually taken at f4 so I stopped down a little bit to get a little more depth of field on the sculpture I wanted it to be sharp like you know his whole face so this is what f4 looks like and it's incredible if you ask me now here's another one at F4, and if I zoom in, you could just see in the incredible detail and sharpness. Now, this background here does look a little bit busy, like at F4. I'm not the biggest fan of the background blur at F4 in this particular shot. This would have looked better if I stopped it, you know, if I opened it up a little bit to like F2.8 or whatever, I think the background would have looked a little bit less busy. Now here's another one, this is again at F4. This one's at f2.8, and you can see just killer, killer sharpness. All right, guys, so at the end of the day, who is this lens for? It's for people that want to take portraits, in my opinion. That's what it's, like, ideal for. So we're talking, if you're taking photos of pets, um, you know, people, uh, any kind of subject where you want, like, unbelievable background separation. If you're looking for maximum butter, this is the lens for you. Um, I would highly recommend it. The price point at $550 is really good considering the optical quality of this lens. As you saw in the lab testing, at f1.2, this lens is ridiculously sharp. Even in the corners, it's sharp at f1.2. And that honestly is amazing. For $550, that's just unbelievable. Lenses like this normally cost like $2,000, for example. It's just insane, that f1.2 aperture and that butter you can get. I really like the way that the rendering looks as well. Like the out of focus area rendering is really good. Incredible sharpness. The flaring is very well controlled as you saw on that Zach Max sculpture. There is just a little bit of flaring that comes in when you're pointing at a really bright light source like the sun or something like that. So if you guys are looking for a portrait lens, I would highly recommend getting this lens. Uh, it's honestly, in my opinion, the best option right now for the Crop Factor Sony cameras. When you factor in the cost of the lens, the quality that it produces, and that background butter is remarkable. So if I was to get a portrait lens for the Crop Factor cameras right now, it would be this lens. Think about uh, taking pictures of kids and stuff, or like a family. Um, you know, like on a rail trail and you want the background nice and blurry, like this is absolutely perfect for that. You know, high school seniors when you're doing, you know, headshots and stuff like that, background blur is great for photos like that. And you can save a lot of money by going crop factor uh, as opposed to going full frame. If you need a full frame lens that produces butter like this, you know, there are some options, but it's going to cost a lot more money than $550. Unless you use a manual focus lens, but come on now. Uh, autofocus versus manual focus is not really much of a comparison. Um, if you're like, you know, in a rush doing portraits and stuff, you're going to want autofocus most likely. If you have more time, of course, uh, you can go with manual focus lenses and get excellent results, no question. But it takes more time to manually focus, you know what I mean? So. All right, guys, I really hope you got what you were looking for in this review. If you could do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Also, below the video, there'll be links where you can check out this lens, find out the best prices and things like that. And I also have linked up a bunch of other gear that I use in case you're interested in my studio and stuff like that. Um, so thanks again for checking out my video. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I will catch up with you guys next time. All right. Take care.